My name is Robert Katende. I'm the founder of uh, Some Chess Academy and the Robert Katende Initiative. This is something which I started uh, 15 years ago. I can't say that I really knew that it would ever be what it has turned out to be, but I just am so grateful to God for what he has been able to nurture through us. That uh, the first bunch of the learners I had from the streets that I started with, they have now been transformed into great leaders in the community who are now influencers of other learners. So right now I'm in the third generation of the learners that those I started with, they are the ones now taking up the leadership, they are the ones taking up the different roles, the directorship roles, the administration, the accounting department, and then the coaching itself. So it's quite amazing to see how they are now able to, to transfer what they, were, they have been taught to other learners as well. So it's quite a blessing and uh, this is what I call a, a legacy uh, that is going to live even after us that you just pass on the uh, philosophy to other people who can carry the mantle and also continue to transform other lives. As I walk around the ground I see there is different ages that are excited playing chess. Who is the youngest child that ever came to the uh, academy centre? Yeah, it's, uh, right now it's quite remarkable because uh, some of the kids, you know, in Uganda, especially in these other less sub communities we are in, the ghettos, or uh, as we call them, the slums, you find that kids are always by themselves and they are actually taking care of themselves. You find the seven-year-old taking care of the three-year-old. Now we have those who are actually very young, around three years, but basically some of them come along to follow their elder brothers or sisters because they are always taking care of themselves. Maybe the guardian has gone to figure out on how to get bread for the day. So they keep around the slum by themselves. So when they come to the center, many times some of them come with them. So we, when we look around the children who are at the center right now, you'll find that they are very young. They are those of three years and say, now what is this one doing here? Uh, but basically they come along with their elder sisters or brothers and in the due course by uh, around four years they get started. So you can say the earliest age to start from is four years. And what's the reception that you receive from the parents that know that their kids are here being transformed? I can say it is remarkable. At times I feel somehow intimidated when they come bowing down, appreciating the service. Uh, because we do avail the children uh, a lunch meal. Uh, before it was so, so serious that the whole place was full that we could not even have any space. So last year we decided to figure out on how best we can uh, limit the numbers. So we, we tried to formalize the, uh, the center that we said, okay, from now onwards we need bonafide members. You have to be a member who subscribes to the ministry program. And what we did was to try to have a criteria on how to screen and limit the numbers. So we requested every child who comes in, we requested the guardians to be able to subscribe as members of the ministry program by paying $3 a year. That cut the number to a half. <laughs> and uh, most of them could not afford the $3 a year to allow their child to be, uh, their children to be part of the program. But we had no way out to do it. We said, no, we have to be committed, you have to fill the form, you have to subscribe every year as a member by paying $3. Because they are given a lunch meal every day, they are taught for free, and we said, now we need to have a commitment that you are part of this ministry, you fill a form, we get to know your details, where you come from, who your guardians are, and all they did, in case an opportunity comes up for like a school opportunity, education, we will definitely know that no, we are reaching out to this member of the ministry program. But that alone really limited a lot of uh, kids to come into the program because most of them just move on the street, they can't even realize a dollar a day. So that's the life they lead. It is really remarkable, but we said no, we have to formalize it. We needed to make sure that we have a formal reception kind of procedure that we follow. And also that helps us to keep track and um, records of each and every child in this centre. That's why we had to really work around. We have a friend of ours called John, uh, John Tad, who helped me actually uh, by donating the grant that I used to put up the perimeter wall fence for the security of the kids. That's why you find that we are now engulfed into the centre, into the fence, 
because you know there are so many other issues with the children. So the kids who come in, we do a roll call, so we are certain that they are part of the whole ministry program. The newcomers, we have to, to find out where they are coming from, and we always encourage them to come with the guardians. But many guardians definitely come and plead because they don't have the money. So this is where we get uh, friends who say, okay, I will pay maybe for 30 kids who cannot afford the membership. So that, that's how sometimes we get some of them in. And uh, budget-wise, since I, I see that you have staff on board, how, uh, how do you manage salaries for the staff? Yeah, salaries, uh, for sure, that is a very big challenge because we do not have any support that comes in on an annual basis that we are relying on it. And honestly speaking, we have only two staff members who are on full-time. Richard, whom you've just been interviewing as an administrator, and then our accountant, they are the only two staff who are on full-time salary. The rest of the other staff members are just on allowances, depending on how we are able to fare in a month. So it's not like we would really desire, because they commit their life, they commit themselves to serve, but we do not have the resources yet to be able to meet their requirements in terms of remuneration. As you continue to pass on the baton, how would you like the community, locally, community, overseas, to partner with you? Or what are the needs that rise up to your mind, heart, as having a priority? Yeah, thank you very much for that. For sure, we would really we call upon any, any member are willing to come and partner with us. We have a 50031 as C in the US at the Robert Catani Initiative, or you can just log on www.robertcateninitiative.org. And actually, we have a donation portal where someone can be able to send a love gift to support the program. We do provide meals here, we do support some children for school. And uh, sometimes this all requires needs funding. So if we can really have people, even part of the, the fast computers that we received from our trip, these actually came through Kenya. So it wasn't easy to get them all the way through Uganda. We ended up still paying taxes as per the customs, but eventually they got here. So we've been using these, the staffs, our members use these as well to try to learn how to type and do all the reporting and all that. The block here is the Chess Academy, which I do believe is the biggest chess academy in East and Central Africa. Designed purposely for chess activities, but uh, as we will see inside, I have also put in a section for the computer laboratory and the library, where we will be enhancing e-learning and learning of the computers as well for the learners, not only from the community here, but even from the slums where we do our Project to work from. Okay. Foundations. 